Hey, honey. I want to get one of those new P09 Nocturnes. It's a brand new gun that came out. What? I I don't I don't already have one at home. These are, these are brand new. These are brand new. They just they just released them. It's got all the latest and greatest features. No, I don't already have one at home. I have to use the one at home. Okay, all joking aside, we're going to be talking about the P09 Nocturne, but really we're going to be talking about the one we have at home. Let's get to shooting. All right, so what are we talking about today? We are talking about the CCP09 Nocturne that we have at home. What do we mean by that? Well, this is a CCP09. It is their tactical version, and you can see it has aggressive grip serrations. It has grip texturing. It has an optics cut. Oh, wait a second. This is not a Nocturne. This is a regular P09. Yes, so I sent my slide in to get milled. So I got it milled for the RMR. So the one main difference between this gun and the P09 Nocturne is that the Nocturne has a slot, has a optics cut for the Hollow Sun 507 407K footprint. That's a key thing, K, or the RMSC. So this RMR that I have on here, actually it's a Trijicon SRO that I have on here, would not fit on the Nocturne. So that's your first tip off that this is the P09 that we have at home. The other tip off is that we have a home stippling job. I'll put in uh, some of the videos of that now. So I think that turned out okay, which is kind of fun. I got some rear stippling, I got some side stippling, I even improved the stippling up front there. What's different between this and the ZZ P09 Nocturne that just came out? They improved the stippling, they didn't have to do it at home. It comes pre-cut with an optics cut, which is super awesome. And that's about all the improvements that they did. Now again, this is the tactical version, so it had a threaded barrel on here. What I have on here is a pretty cool little system. I have on here a Griffin cam lock system. It allows you to put a a cam lock brake on it, and then you can put your suppressor on the end of it, and allows you to, if you're gonna move your suppressor between various guns, maybe they have different calibers, things like that, you can do so without having to change any of the muzzle devices, and I thought that's a cool way. Uh, instead of just leaving a thread protector on here, uh, I might leave that cam lock uh, comp on here. So as you can see, I have my Turbo X300 on here, just for kicks and giggles and my Trijicon SRO. Uh, it is a very nice, very clear dot. You can see we're back at the, back at the seven yard range. Yeah. Uh, this trigger has not been had any changes or anything done to it. So it's a very heavy double action pull. It went past my eight pounds on my trigger gauge. I'm thinking it's about 10, uh, nine to 10 pounds on it. And then it's clearly, it's single action is not while it's super crisp and short, it is not by any stretch of the means uh, a light one. It is also five pounds. So let's just kind of ghost that for you uh, and you can see it. See, very crisp, very short right in there. Off camera, I redid the slide so that we can watch the reset on the trigger. Goes out to about there and then we're back on it again. So. Not bad. Uh, I have CZ or Cajun Gunworks or CZ Gunworks. A bunch of these places can make those improvements for you if that is something that you want to do. Okay, the CZ P09 that we have here, it did come, it's their tactical version, so it came with extended magazines, so it came with two 20 round magazines with it. Uh, again, this, if th this is a single action, double action, because it has the Omega trigger in it, you can convert it to single action, or you can convert the decocker to a safety on it. Uh, I have left mine in a decocker mode, which means that when the hammer's back, I can push down on this ambidextrous uh, decocker level and I'm pushing it on my left side. Uh, you can see it moving over here. 
Uh, it will lower the hammer in a safe way and allows you to carry this in a double action sing, uh, mode, which is the preferred way to carry this gun. Uh, it keeps that hammer right off the firing pin uh, and allows us to be just a little bit more safe as we we're carrying it. One of the great things I love about double action, single action is it has that very long crisp first pull, which provides a little bit more safety. And then also if you keep your thumb on that hammer, you know that when you are holstering this or you're putting it yeah, away, you know, if you keep your thumb on it and you keep it pressed down, uh, if you start feeling it coming back, then there's something caught in the trigger and something might happen with that. All right, well, we've got two 20 round magazines loaded up. Uh, we've got the compensator on here. I have shot it before. I've shot it even after I got the slide back to make sure everything works. I have not really zeroed it in though. So let's see how our zero is. See if we have to make any adjustments. All right, well, that was stupid. Let's try this again. My glasses are fogged up. I can't really see what the heck is going on. So let me switch over to some different glasses. <clears throat> it's a little disappointing. I had gotten those glasses specifically. They were supposed to be no foggy. They even have some special cuts in the sides, but it doesn't seem to work. But maybe it's best when I can't see because that's not a bad target starting off with this. Uh, yeah, that's 20 rounds, and again, we're only down here at seven yards, so not a great distance. Um, I am going to make a little bit of adjustment on this dot, and then we'll shoot our next 20 rounds. All right, we got our next 20 rounds, made a couple of adjustments. We'll see how we do with this. Well, we lost the target. I think I do want to pause anyways. It looks like I adjusted too far right. And boy, that first shot was terrible. I dropped it so bad it was off the target. Got to get used to that heavy double action. That's why some people don't like double action, single action, because you don't want to miss your first shot. Striker fire uh, gun has the same pull every single time. That's why people love the Glock. Pros and cons. All right, well, we got five shots. I'm going to start off with that double action again. And we're going to see if the adjustments that I made make a difference. Yeah, that's right on for me. Okay, well, we have some of this 150 grain kind of lipstick pill. This is the Federal Syntec. It's 150 grain. It's great for suppressors. So since this is a tactical gun, I figured we got to run something tactical, right? It's, if it's just, oh, it's tactical and you never put anything tactical on it, like a suppressor, which is why it has a threaded barrel. And well, it didn't have super high tall night sights, but I added those later or super high tall suppressor height sights. Dang, that's stupid quiet. I really like this Dead Air Wolverine. It's a little heavy, but dang. Pretty slick, and I use that Griffin armament, so you can see here is the comp off. And in this case, I was able to just take the comp off and then lock on the suppressor. So an interesting little system. We'll keep trying it out and see what we think about it. Okay, well, I sure hope everyone had a great time today. I know I did. It was a lot of fun shooting this P09 Nocturne we have at home. 
Uh, and certainly this is my P09. And what is kind of funny about it is not too long ago, I thought the P09 was going away. We were seeing some real cool blowout prices. And so I said, dang, I really have always wanted one of these P09s and uh, got to get on it before they're gone, right? And then, of course, they come out with a new and improved one. And that would have been a little bit better for me because it already came with an optics cut. Of course, one of the good things about uh, doing your own optics cut is you know it's cut specifically for the dot that you give them. And it's a tight fit. It's great custom work. Um, ended up getting this great Sarah coating. I do wish that I had some of those lightning cuts or, or cuts on the top of it to make, just so that I could grab it. CZ, especially their double action, single action guns are a little bit hard to grab because they have a very small thin slide up front. They have a great low bore axis, which makes them easy to shoot, but their slide is pretty thin. So being able to get on top of that to rack it is sometimes a challenge for my grip strength. Um, so sometimes you'll see me coming over the top like that, which is probably not the best practice, but it works. Uh, yeah, so let me know about the CZ P09 that we have at home. Do you think it was a good call to get it before the Nocturne came? Should I have wait? Was I foolish? Uh, do you think this is a good idea anyways? What do you think of my homemade <laughs> uh, uh, grip texturing that I did on it? I just used a wood burner and kind of just poked through it, as you can see in that video. But I think it turned out pretty good. I actually think it really improved it. It was a little bit slippery. And so I'm glad they improved that on the Nocturne. Uh, but And now I'm glad that I have mine. If you have one of these P09s, it didn't cost much to get a wood burner off of Amazon. Not a wood burner. It's a uh, woodworking to burn uh, designs into the wood. And uh, you saw what I did with it. So it's not bad at all. So I know for me, this is a fantastic suppressor host. That's one of the philosophies that I've been thinking. I know I've said that in the past with other guns that I've got, but uh, uh, I really like the, the I'm, a, I'm a big fan of the double action, single action. And uh, yeah, so let me know what you guys think. I hope everyone has a great week and let's get to shooting.